I've been called to DSI today to have a look at this model year 17 DAF XF with engine power reduction and engine malfunctions on the DAF instrument panel. No point doing any checks till we get our VCI plugged into this OBD socket on the passenger side. And with all our powers and grounds correct, we're going to need some top of the line diagnostics to do this. And with all these dealer diagnostics available to me, one particular brand comes out on top every time. And that's Jaltest from Eclipse Diagnostics, which you can own from as little as £65 a week. Links in the description if you want one. Anyway, with Jaltest plugged in, we can start our auto VIN identification and select our 2017 model here. As we know we're dealing with an engine malfunction, we'll head straight into PCI, which stands for Packard Common Rail Injection, and read our fault codes directly from there. With VTG Actuator Internal Fault accompanied by Engine Torque Reduction, I think we're onto something here. As you can see lower down the fault codes, we have inactive faults for software error and CAN timeout. Now, DAF have a factory policy that covers these VTG actuators for 5 years, but with this being out of policy, we'll be fitting one of my repaired units. As you can see, Jaltest lists all the technical data you'll ever need to test and identify any potential electrical issues with these actuators. But the fact that these particular DTCs meet DAF's criteria of 3 or more occurrences, and with no performance loss or issue described to me by the driver, we're going to go ahead and replace the actuator as per the instructions on Jaltest. So, if we go into calibrations and take this out of idiot mode, we can crack on and see what we need to do to get this fixed right first time. If we click proceed here, this will take us through to the disassembly instructions for the HE400 and HE500 VTG turbos. So we best do as it says and get the cab over. We're working on the hot side of this MX-13 engine today. As you can see with the actuator and the turbo, it's water cooled. So we need to drop some, if not all the coolant out of the engine. So time to open the drain tap. With our coolant out the engine, we can now get back up to the turbo and get on with the removal of the VTG actuator. VTG standing for Variable Turbine Durometry. Try saying that when you're drunk. We will start with the removal of the coolant pipe retaining bolt at the back here, which we can then get out of the way and then that lets us get to the bolts, which are easy enough to get to on MX-13, unlike MX-11. With the back bolts removed, we can get the front two out and that's all we need to get this VTG actuator loose. With our electrical plug removed, we can carefully lift this up and out the way. Now, you might notice some oil here. This isn't to be mistakenly interpreted as a failing component. Model year 17 HE turbos allow for oil to pass the selector shaft gear during certain engine operating situations. What is important is to check for a full range of movement of the nozzle ring mechanism to both stops and smooth operation of the turbo arm. And don't forget to check for any cracks. I'll leave a link at the end of this video for you to see what sort of symptoms this can cause. This is my official Truck Tech UK screwdriver turbo location tool to set the turbo in the correct position for the actuator. As you can see, it drops in when the actuator arm passes its location point and with me now unable to move the arm, we can remove the location tool and leave this set ready for the next step. With our batteries now reconnected and the ignition now on, we can plug in our actuator and set it to one side for Jaltest to begin the calibration.
With all our required conditions met, let's get this actuator aligned. With the turbo actuator gear rotated and aligned, we can continue to the next step, which is fitting the actuator to the turbo as per the instructions on JAL test. Ignition stays on and all we need to do is carefully drop the actuator onto the turbo. Any twisting or sliding about here can have detrimental effects on the calibration steps and possibly cause poor turbo performance, not to mention rapid soot loading. So no need to rush this. Once I got the actuator to drop onto the turbo, I could fire my bolts in and torque them up to the required torque as stated in the checking data and then press continue. As you can hear, the actuator is now going through its step calibration. And with the process completed, Jaltest recommends carrying out the calibration value checking. So that's what we're going to do next. We need to take this out of calibration mode. So we're going to cycle the ignition for 15 seconds. If I can reach the keys to do that. With our ignition cycle complete and back to the main menu, we can check our fault codes to see what is active and what is now inactive. Well, this looks like we got something right. All our turbo actuator faults are now inactive. Yes, the engine torque is still active, but this is from the actuator going into failsafe mode. So we can just clear all these out the PCI ECU and then head over to the calibration tab to run the value checking process. As you can see, our requirements are met to run this test. This process allows the turbo actuator to take the turbo through its complete span and compare it to the minimum requirements, which is 415 steps. The actuator passes with 425 steps meaning it's moving correctly through its whole range of motion and that the nozzle ring mechanism is moving correctly. With the cab now down, I can get the grill open, grab my booster pack and fire up the coolant pump to fill the coolant system back up ready for the final evaluation on road test. No real diagnostics in this week's video, unfortunately. But when a smart actuator is reporting internal faults and software issues, it's best to bite the bullet and change it out. The standard time DAF give you for actuator replacements is an hour and a half, which you can comfortably do this job in. If you want to see what else can go wrong with these HE400 and HE500 turbos, I've got that video here. Drop a comment below, like if you haven't, subscribe if you're not, and I'll catch you in the next one. Every time.